Nola Jet here at Porter and Luke's Restaurant. Good stuff in here, yeah! Welcome to Nola Jet. Let the good times roll. In this episode of our New Orleans Travel Vlog, we visit Porter and Luke's Restaurant for some good stuff in here with our restaurant review videos. We're going to experience some good times in here for St. Patrick's Day lunch because in New Orleans, we celebrate St. Patrick's for the entire week. Porter and Luke's is located on the greater New Orleans suburb of Metairie at 1517 Metairie Road, which is about 15 minutes and 8 miles from the French Quarter. So let's go ahead and head on inside and check this place out. So we're going for a traditional Irish corned beef and cabbage today as that's one of the specials. So we're going to have a fantastic neat feast as we meet up with another Dola gent, the goat, for some more good stuff in here. If you're looking for where to eat great food in New Orleans, Porter and Luke's is one of the top restaurants in the New Orleans area. They have a lot of private dining areas in here and I've enjoyed a lot of great meals in some of these private dining rooms. Porter and Luke's is a popular restaurant for locals, while it seems to be a bit of a secret New Orleans spot to most tourists. So, uh, there are an above average number of private meeting dinners and lunches that I've enjoyed here. So while the location and a strip mall doesn't look all that impressive, they do punch above their weight for just the sheer number of people that choose to host events here, and they really do have some fantastic food in this spot. This location might look a bit familiar to some of you, as this location was previously called Zeke's, which was featured on Kitchen Nightmares with Chef Gordon Ramsay, but that restaurant went out of business and Porter and Luke's restaurant took its place. There were a few St. Patrick's revelers already in the bar, and towards the end of the day, we noticed more and more showing up in the different restaurants and bars in the area. For a little extra fun, they have a larger fish tank that looks into the bar area and the main dining room. But let's go ahead and look at the menu now. So we have flatbreads with grilled chicken, muffalata, Italian. We have soups with turtle soup, seafood gumbo, soup du jour. And we have shareables with a tuna stack, hot blue crab dip, shrimp remoulade, parmesan crusted eggplant, onion rings, french fries, house made chips, sweet potato fries. Then we have a variety of salads. Then we get into our platters with catfish, gulf shrimp, oyster, combination seafood, soft shell crab, de Salamon's catfish platter, then kids menu. And then we get into our sandwiches. We have catfish, shrimp, oyster, chicken parmesan, soft shell crab, Bill Parmesan po' boy, meatball po' boy, PL cheeseburger, and the club. Then on the other side, we have entrees with a half fried chicken, grilled fish of the day, charbroiled salmon, pecan crusted catfish, eggplant Sophie, 22 ounce USDA prime cowboy ribeye, meatballs and pasta, eggplant parmesan with pasta, chicken parmesan with pasta, Bill Parmesan with pasta, rosemary chicken, and soft shell poncha train. And then they have a selection of wines and beers. So we got a nice little plate of buttered French bread brought out to us and I decided to start out with a seafood gumbo. It looks fantastic, a lot of great stuff on here, but of course, I always eat a little Tabasco sauce to kick it up a notch, oh yes. Gumbo always needs a little touch of uh, Tabasco in it for my flavor to love. Well, let's dig in and see how this stuff tastes. It looks pretty nice. I think it's going to be delicious. Ooh, look at all this crab meat and shrimp in here. No oysters, though. I always like a little oyster in there, too. We are at peak oyster season, but uh, no crawfish either. We're also at peak uh, crawfish season. But hey, okay, so it is tasty and flavorful. So the crab and shrimp combo is delicious. So it's very nice. I would not argue with more crawfish and oyster additions being made to it, so that'd be my only suggestions to add a little extra love in here of our local produce, which is so good, especially this time of the year. And there's just nice big chunks of seafood and crab in here, so it's very nice. So, it's good stuff. You definitely should try some of this gumbo as one of your starters. They also have a really good turtle soup here, too. So uh, those are definitely great ways to start your meal out. 
and uh, it is an easy thing to take down. This is just the cup. This isn't even the bowl. So this is the smaller size one, and it's pretty generous serving. So you can't uh, complain about the uh, amount of gumbo you get in here. Some places uh, give you a really tiny amount, but this is uh, what other places call a bowl. This is what they call a cup of gumbo. So this is uh, quite a nice serving. I would call this a bowl. I wonder how huge the actual bowl is. That would be an entire meal by itself. Definitely as large as this serving is. So it's definitely got lots of uh, really delicious seafood in there. And I've destroyed it. So go ahead and destroy that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up if you too love seafood gumbo. And hey, while you're at it, go ahead and uh, comment below. Let me know what you think about this video. So I decided to go with the corned beef because hey, it's St. Patrick's Day time. Now, my waitress didn't tell me what any of the specials were. I just asked if there was corned beef, and she said yes. I don't know what the other specials were. So, let's go ahead and try to dig into this stuff. Now, there's a nice smoky flavor coming off of it. There's some kind of a sauce on here. It looks sort of like maybe they put a barbecue sauce or something on it. So I'm not sure. There's uh, good smoky flavors, and I think it is maybe some kind of a barbecue sauce on here. Or some other kind of a sweeter type of sauce. So... Not quite sure what they put on the brisket here. They've uh, done quite a lot of toppings on here. Never had a corned beef quite like this. This is uh, kind of the kicked up corned beef, I guess. Now it's uh, very thinly sliced. I usually tend to like my little corned beef entree with a little bit of a thicker overall slice to it. Um, I think uh, Joey K's has a pretty darn good weekly special that's the corned beef that they have on Monday. So you get a big slab of cabbage and a nice big helping of corned beef with a nice dollop of Creole mustard next to it that really adds a lot of bonus flavor. You might know I'm a big fan of the Creole mustard, so I really like the way it goes together. Now this does have some good flavors. My only complaint about it is uh, it's on the tough side. So I definitely have had more tender corned beef, I've had better corned beef, but I've also had a lot, lot worse corned beef. So this is uh, sort of, uh, it's trending towards the better side of the corned beef experiences I've had. Uh, however, it is certainly on the tough side and not the uh, usual kind of more tender corned beef that I would prefer. So the cabbage also has lots of great flavor. It's almost a little too salty, but uh, it's, it's still good flavored. I do like this, so maybe just a touch bit less salt would be the only recommendation I could have for the cabbage. Whereas with the corned beef, it definitely could use maybe a little more time cooking to get it more tenderized because, ooh, this stuff is... Uh, Kind of hard to chew, definitely. Well, in the grand scheme of things, I've definitely have had way easier to eat corned beef in my time than this one. But I've also tasted corned beef that was tender and not that good still. So this one, even though it's chewy, does have some good flavor profiles to it at least. So hey, flavor is important. And wow, I still have a bunch of cabbage to get through too, but this is my last bite of corned beef. I'm gonna be so sad after this. No more meat after this, how oh, sad. Oh, the last of the corned beef. Except there's still some corned beef mixed in with the cabbage, so I can't be totally sad yet. So, we still have a little more to go in here, and uh, hmm, all kinds of other things in there. Looks like a little mirepoix with a little uh, carrot, maybe some uh, celery, some onion in here maybe. So yeah, a lot of good things going on in here. So lots of good flavors. So it's uh, definitely the cabbage, uh, other than a little over-salted possibly, is pretty good generally. So, it's, uh, you know, a good St. Patrick's Day dish, corned beef and cabbage. It's also a good New Year's dish to have. A little uh, corned beef and uh, black-eyed peas for luck is uh, what we tend to like to do here. So, this is uh, definitely going to get all my vitamins in me. Cabbage is a great little dish to have, well, along with corned beef. They go together pretty darn good, I would say. I'm always in the mood for a little cabbage, though. I kind of like it. It uh, always uh, makes me feel healthy after. It's got a lot of vitamin K in it, so it's always good for you. Okay, so I think I'm done with this now. So go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. 
Comment below and let me know what you thought about this meal. And while you're down there, check out the link to my Patreon account because, hey, I work for tips. I'd really appreciate it if you could help me out with that. And share this video with any of your contacts and friends that would enjoy it. I really appreciate it. And I had to try this dessert. It's a Chantilly cheesecake. So it's like a cheesecake surrounded by Chantilly cake. Oh my gosh, what kind of insane combination is this? Oh my, this is definitely kicked up in every way possible. One of the best cakes I know about, along with cheesecake in the middle. Whoa, this is crazy huge too. It's just chock full of all kinds of good stuff here. So this is a, quite a grand way to celebrate a little St. Patrick's. Wow, delicious, wonderful stuff here. So this was not what I was expecting to be on the dessert menu today. It's got a lot of good flavors. Ooh, 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 ooh. So the uh, cheesecake is just kind of uh, in the middle there, there now, and then it's cake surrounding on each side with all kinds of delicious fruit. We've got strawberries and blueberries and then lots of delicious buttercream icing, and then some whipped cream, and then some almonds on top. <laughs> so much going on. Wow, there's a lot of good flavors in here. I'm really enjoying this. It's just every bite has so much deliciousness to it. But I'm not gonna be able to finish all of this cake. So let's go ahead and check out the bill here. The total is $37 before tip. So, thanks so much to everybody at Porter and Luke's Restaurant for a fantastic St. Patrick's lunch. And thanks to all of you out there for tuning into the Nola Jet channel, especially my Patreons. And just go ahead and smash that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, check out the comments below, and look at my Patreon link too because I do work for tips and I'd really appreciate it. And tune in next time for more good food, good times, and good people. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you would just click on the little circle here with a picture of my head in there and subscribe to the Nola Jet channel, it would really help me a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you.